Brian, thanks for joining me today. Hey, it's a pleasure, Mike. Thank you. So I'm going to get right to it. We're talking about the book, Eat That Frog for Students, 21 Great Ways to Stop Procrastinating and Excel in School. And actually, I think it's changed, isn't it? More? It's more ways, plenty of ways to procrastinate. Yeah, two ways now. They, <laughs> they added one. There's an additional one. Um, first off, I want to, uh, many of the people that are listening to this will uh, have a sense of what eat that frog or eat the frog means. But can you touch on that a little bit for those that aren't necessarily familiar about what you mean by eat the frog? Well, I have a, a publisher, Steve Persadi at um, Barrett Kohler, and um, he was saying, do I have anything that I think would be popular or, or, or excitable? And I said, well, I've got a book on time management, and it's called Double Your Income, Double Your Time Off, uh, 21 Great Ways. Uh, and he, he said, uh, well, he sent it up to me, and he read it through, and he said, and he's a brilliant editor, uh, and he said, well, he said, I like the idea. It's got a lot of meat to it, 21 great ways. He said, but I don't like the title. He said, if you could change the title to something more appealing, and at that time, uh, who, ate my, who ate my cheese was popular, fish was popular. Could you, could you figure out an animal? He said, and chapter 15 was called Eat That Frog. And it said that if the first thing you do in the morning is you eat a live frog, you'll have the satisfaction of knowing it's probably the worst thing that's going to happen to you all day long. And uh, it comes from a story by Mark Twain, you know, 100, 150 years ago. And uh, he said there's two corollaries to that rule. Corollary number one is that if you have to eat two frogs, eat the ugliest one first. And uh, corollary number two is if you have to eat a frog at all, it doesn't pay to sit there and look at it for too long. And of course your frog, what I did is I translated, your frog is your, is your biggest task. We say, do the worst first. Start off with your frog, the biggest task, the one that can make the biggest difference in your life and work, and in this case, in your studies, in your college. And so I wrote the book and I wrote the book and we put this theme of preparing the table and getting ready and making the dish and learning from uh, experience. And the book came out and it sold a few and then it sold a few more and then it sold a few more and then it sold hundreds of thousands and then two and a half million copies in 51 languages and became the most popular book on time management in probably the history of the world. And uh, so my friends at, uh, at, at Barrett Kohler, they said, well, you know, there's another whole, whole market um, for a book like this, and it's for students, because students need to get good grades. They're overwhelmed with too much to do and too little time. They wanted to get into college or university and so on. Let's could we rewrite the book and repurpose it completely? So we said, of course. And we didn't just take the book and just ch change a couple of words for students. We rewrote the entire book with 22 ways to stop procrastinating and excel in school. And uh, we have just now released the book. And uh, there's at least 3 million students who come out of high school and into college each year. And then of course, there's all the students that are in college. So we have millions and millions of people. And one of the first things you do in marketing is you identify a large market for the product. And then you identify a product for that market that is very appealing. Um, and so that's what we've done here. And that's why I'm talking to you is to help uh, students uh, dramatically increase the speed at which they get good grades. And especially if they're in high school, how they get in to a top college or university. And uh, so it's written and it's specialized. And I worked with my friends. Uh, my partner at, uh, at Barracola is Anna Leinberger. And uh, she's just a wonderful person. And she's only a few years out of college. Uh, so she really has a good sense for what students need. So basically, right, left, right hand of iron, left hand of steel. If the right one don't get you, then the left one will. So <laughs> the two of us have worked together. And, and Anna has done a wonderful job in personalizing this for students. And it will literally change a student's life and will change the life of the parents who give this to their student to help their student to get out of high school and into college and into a good university. 
well, my daughter's in grade 10 right now. So she's going through some of that stuff as well. She's at that age where it's st- the transition is starting to take place where she, I mean, she literally made one of those social media videos saying, oh my goodness, I'm closer to moving out of the house than when I was born. You know, like <laughs> dawning on her that being an adult is around. The, is, but, but one thing that isn't really taught in school is time management. Like it's just one of those things that they don't teach. And when when she i'm trying to impart this stuff upon her there's there's just this barrier like it's it's just hard for them to to kind of wrap their head around so what do you think in in the book and also in the teaching you've done before is one of the biggest barriers to getting people like students particularly over the hump of going oh you know what this is something i can do and and all of a sudden start to to make it happen because again it's not something that that's taught you have to kind of most people have to work their way through it so you've put something together that'll help them do it but what's the biggest barrier to kind of getting them into that space well uh, one of the things that that, that tra- transformed my mind um, for life was when i was growing up and working and i was young and struggling and time management was terrible i used to think that time management was sort of like, like, like my life was the sun and time management was planets that revolved around the sun. So I read a time management book here or I read an article there and I use a technique here and there. And then I had a revelation. The revelation was that, that time management is not a planet that comes in and out of orbit. Time management is the sun of my life and everything that happens is... Um, uh, circulate or revolves around that, that your ability to manage your time is everything, that your time is your life. Your time is everything that you want is determined by the way you use your time. And wonderfully enough, it's a learnable skill. This is one of my big success discoveries is that you can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. So I encourage people to imagine that you have a magic wand and you could wave this magic wand and you could accomplish anything you want in life and sit down with a piece of paper even better a spiral notebook and write down what you want and write down what you'll have the steps you'll have to take to get it now it seems very simple but only three percent of adults write down what they want in the present tense as though it were already true Uh, i have i earn i achieve i acquire these grades and so on Your subconscious mind can only relate to a command that is couched in the present tense. So therefore, if you say, I weigh X number of pounds, and it's substantially less than you currently weigh, your subconscious mind says, hey, wait a minute. I know how much you weigh. Now you're saying you weigh something different. And you say, yes, I weigh X number of pounds. And I weigh X number of pounds by this date. Well, your subconscious mind creates what is called a, a cognitive dissonance. It's a clash within the, within the mind. And the subconscious mind, for, for health reasons of some kind, goes to work to resolve the difference, the, the disagreement between what you're saying and what the subconscious mind knows is true. And the way that it resolves this, it's almost like when you say it and when you write it, you program it into your subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind starts to motivate you and inspire you and give you ideas to move you toward accomplishing uh, the person that you want to be. And so there's a simple rule. And it's, this changed my life when I learned this stuff uh, many years ago. And, and the rule is um, never say anything to yourself that you do not want to be true. Because if you say it, your subconscious mind says, okay, we'll make it true. I'm always late. Oh, your subconscious mind goes to work, say, yep, you're always late. You're going to forget this and you're going to have to turn around and you'll not pay attention to the time and so on. But instead, if you say, I'm always punctual, I'm always punctual. Oh, yes, you were late for this meeting. Yes, I was late for this meeting, but I'm actually always punctual. That was just an anomaly. And you can actually program yourself so that you become better and better and better. So in this book on time management, it's designed in such a way that if you just learn and practice, and we give little exercises for each uh, chapter, if you learn and practice the exercises, what happens is you actually reprogram yourself to be well-organized, focused, concentrated, and uh, a great time manager. 
Well, what's what's great about the book and great about your work is that it is it's those it's those pieces. It's not an all in one like you have to do all of this now because if you don't do it all now, then the whole house of cards falls apart. You actually can do try this tactic and then you layer it. Right. Which I think and I think what I've seen over the years and I see this especially with apps. Right. Like when they get an app on their phone or they get some kind of computer program and they see that they should do use it all. Right. Whether it's a phone or a, um, I think that's one of the things that can create a barrier. How how do you, how do you uh, help people or what's your recommendation when people are starting to use some of the technology that exists? Cause it's great. The technology is wonderful. We never, I mean, I, I had the, the cup Franklin Covey planners and I was using highlighters and I still love, like I'm, I'm writing things down on a little mini, you know, yellow legal pad paper, papers having a real Renaissance right now too, but still people are, people are hung up on these devices that have like their to-do lists on them. So what, how do you think those two things can uh, work together? It, because I know, and, I, and I'm sure you've come across this too, that people, they download an app and they go, well, the app will do the work. The app will do it for me, right? Yeah. Well, uh, again, I have spent, I guess, what, 40 years, 50 years on this yep. now. And uh, one of the things that I've learned as I've gone through this journey is that you can write things down by hand on a piece of paper, or you can type them into an, uh, an iPhone or a computer or a, a laptop. They've done exhaustive studies now and they've tested students, the ones who keep, take handwritten notes in classes and then review the notes later or reorganize and review the notes and those who type it into uh, a laptop. And what they found is the students who write out by hand uh, their uh, the key ideas, the notes, get vastly better grades. And there's a couple of reasons for it. One is that they have a tendency to review the notes more than if they just type it. Because if they type it, they say, okay, okay uh, keep. And what it happens is they say, well, if I need to review it, I will. Whereas if they've written it down, they have a natural tendency to rewrite it, revise it, and so on. Also, your subconscious mind is, is connected it's almost like you, your subconscious mind is two or three people who operate uh, computers and then you go into the next room and there is a, uh, a room with a computer the size of an airplane uh, hangar and it's called your superconscious mind. And your superconscious mind is this massive computer that contains all the knowledge in the universe and it works 24 hours a day, attracting into your life people, circumstances, ideas, and so on, to help you to achieve your most important goals. And you program the computer by the things that you say, and in, in one case, by the things that you write down. So therefore, if you write down, I get this grade in this class by this date, all right? Well, your subconscious mind says, okay, that's a, that's a very good command. We'll push it in and it's handed off to the superconscious. And the superconscious then begins to work 24 hours a day to get you an A in that course or get you a four or whatever it happens to be. And it's really quite astonishing. Uh, and the interesting thing is, is that you will probably be skeptical when you first hear this stuff, but skepticism is not part of superconscious functioning. So it just, ignores your skepticism and just keeps focused on the the goal and the goal is to get you an excellent grade and you say i get into a an excellent college or university all right now you don't know what is an excellent college or university for you mm -hmm. you may have heard stuff read stuff we received uh, mailings and so on but your superconscious mind knows and so your superconscious mind starts working to bring you to the perfect college or university for you in the perfect way at exactly the right time. And 100% is controlled by your writing down your goal in the present tense. It sounds very simple, but only 3% of adults, according to studies at Harvard University, have clear written goals with plans, which is basically an organized list. Mm -hmm. You make a list of the things you'll have to achieve it, and you organize the list by priority what comes first, what comes second, what comes third. And that just becomes your blueprint. And you just work on it steady, steady every day. 
And surprise, surprise, soon it starts to go become automatic and you start to move faster and faster towards your goals and your goals start to move faster and faster toward you. Over your years of study, what's some of the, and, and I know that this, this is in the book as, as well, um, you can see it, is what are some of the things that you, you've noticed you're like, this is timeless, like the problems that people face, the things that they're not necessarily yeah. doing. There's, I mean, yes, we're in the 21st century now and things are, there's, we've got amazing technology and we've learned a lot, but there's certain things. I mean, one of my favorite time management books is Arnold Bennett's How to Live on 24 Hours a Day. It was written a hundred years ago and you look and you go, oh, yeah. they, these things have just been replaced with other things. So what are yeah. some timeless things that you've seen over years? You've gone, yep, this problem existed when I first started and it's still here now and here's how you can combat it. Well, let, let me give you a couple of answers sure. that, I, that I love. And, and I'm really passionate about simplicity. Um, we don't want complex, multi-step uh, ways to, to, to finish a task. We need simplicity. Well, I have spoken now to more personally, to more than 5 million business people in 84 countries. I'm probably you know, one of the most successful business speakers in the world. You, in Europe, if you ask people in a business meeting, how many people have heard of Brian Tracy, about 80 to 90% of the hands will go up because I have published about 50 or 60 books in various European languages uh, and, and even more. I've just, I'm, 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 I've done 90, I've written 90 books now, published 90 books, and I'm just finishing book number 91. Um, and I've, had, I've finished 90 chapters, it's a 12 chapter book. Anyway, here's, what, here's one of the things that I learned is that all of success in life is task completion. It's not task working on, it's task completion. And task completion is very much a decision that you make. And whether it's a small task or a large task, when you start and complete a task, then you get rewards. Of course, you get acknowledgement, from the people around you. And more than anything else, you get psychological rewards. Uh, completing a task makes you happy. It makes you confident. One of the, th the most important things I learned is that your self-esteem is everything. And your self-esteem is defined as how much you like yourself and how much you respect yourself and how much you value and appreciate yourself as an important and worthwhile person. All problems in adult life come from feelings of low self-esteem, not liking yourself, not respecting yourself, doubting yourself. And uh, that with regard to self-esteem, which is the, in the inner heart, the hub of your personality, everything counts. Everything counts. Everything you do or fail to do counts. Now, with regard to eat that frog, there's a central theme. And the central theme is pick your most important task today and start on it and complete it and put it away. That's it. Go home. I sometimes I would joke with my audiences. They're there for an entire day. And I would say this in the first few minutes. I say, that's it. Go home now. Seminar's <laughs> over. Everybody laughs. And, uh, and, and why? Because the, the most important principle in Eat That Frog is select your most important task, get it organized, and work on it non-stop until it's finished. And one of the wonderful things is, not only will you get tremendous accolades from the people around you who are dependent upon you completing your task, but you will feel terrific yourself. And as a result, you'll be motivated into doing your next task. There's a top psychologist named Alfred Adler, and he wrote a book called Learned, uh, what am I talking about, called, called uh, Shoot, I just went break, broke, it just went foggy, but the, the word was uh, like a learned addiction. Right. Uh, yeah, um, and what he, what he basically said is that every time you do anything, you get feedback in the forms of chemical reactions. And when you start and complete a task, your brain releases endorphins. And the endorphins are called nature's happy drug. They're basically like lighting up. You know, you, you, you complete a task and you get a buzz. Now, what happens is if you develop the habit, learned addiction, that's what he said, learned addiction. He said, if you 
if you get if you repeat tasks and and complete tasks over and over again, you develop an addiction for starting and completing tasks. So if you start and complete a little task, you get your gas tank filled at the grocery store, you come home and you prepare dinner. Each time you finish the little task, you get a buzz. If you complete a big task, you get a big buzz. You get a hit. Wow, geez. And you get motivated. You feel happy about yourself. That's why we say if you're working on a paper, and I had this when I took my MBA, when you're working on a paper that's due tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, and when do you start? You usually start at eight o'clock the night before. Yep. <laughs> and it's, it, we, we, we call it the, uh, the, 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 hot, the, coffee, the hot coffee uh, method of writing papers. You say, oh my God, now I've, I've got to get the paper in. It's got to be in by tomorrow morning. You put on a cup, pot of coffee and you drink coffee and you write that paper and you get that paper done. And then you get it into the professor's hands or under the professor's door before time is, is up. Um, and it's the same thing here. What you do is you, you get motivated so you can hardly wait to complete your most important task. And when you develop a positive addiction, you become a high performer. You become a, a you, you, you just get so much stuff done. You get admired and respected by other people. More than anything else, people say, if you want something done, give it to him, give it to her. If you go out to the world of work, most important, they say the most important ability in the world of work is depend ability. That means that if you say you'll do it, they know you can take it to the bank. If, um, if uh, somebody says that they'll do a job, they do the job and they do it on time and they do it well. Uh, and that kind of a reputation for life is going to be fantastic. Uh, anyway, so I, I get carried away with the idea. The key is simply is simple start and complete your most important task. Each time, start off in the morning and say, what is my most important task? And start identify it, follow the instructions in the book, identify everything you have to do, put them in order, start on number one and keep working until it's done. And get into the habit of starting and completing your most important task. And you're guaranteed to have a wonderful life. Guaranteed to have a great life. Brian, that's that. This has been fantastic. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. The book is "Eat That Frog" for students. Uh, where will people be able to take it up? Like Amazon, the usual spots. The usual spots. You can get it anywhere. Awesome, yeah. awesome, Brian. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Productivity Podcast. Well, I very much uh, wish uh, the very best of success to our listeners. Sometimes one small change that you make, sometime in your life, will change your life forever. And you look back, I call these turning points. And you look back and very often, like you're talking about books that you've read, very often it's just reading a book or just reading a chapter in a book or just reading an anecdote in a chapter in a book that uh, changes your life. And I hope this does that for our listeners. Thanks again. And don't go yet because I want to tell you something real quick. Um, you're, are you still in, are you living in Charlottetown still, or are you just, fr you're, you're not there anymore, are you? Yeah, I, no, I, I live in uh, San Diego. Okay. I've, I've been here for 40 years. So you're born in Charlottetown. I'm Canadian. I'm from Hamilton originally. You know where I'm living now? Victoria, BC, the other side of the well, country. Okay, <laughs> I, I spent my growing up years in British yeah. Columbia. Yeah, you're in Vancouver, right? Weren't you like a lot of time yeah. in Vancouver? Yeah, and my brother lives in Victoria. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, whereabouts? Do you, like like uh, just downtown? It's I mean, yeah, Victoria's changed so much, even in the 20 years I've been here. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to say before I let you go, I know, I mean, we're we're pretty much at time, but uh, just again, it's been a real pleasure. It's always great to be able to, I mean, I've had the pleasure to talk to a lot of people that I would consider mentors in this space. And you are definitely somebody that I've wanted to talk to for a, a long time. And I really do appreciate you taking the time to speak with me today. Well, thank you, Mike. And uh, I sincerely, I wish you uh, all the best of everything. Thank you so much. You take care, be well, and good luck with the book. One little uh, piece of guidance. Sure. People say, what's the secret to success? The secret to success is help other people. And just constantly thinking, how can I help more people with my work, my intelligence, my experience, my knowledge? And remember always, it's not about you, it's about them. And I, I see that you do this in your, in your work. 
Um, it's the same thing. Just continually say, how can I help? How can I serve other people? One of my great one-liners, one Errol Nightingale, the mentor of mine, he said the, that, that everything in life comes from serving others. And the word service contains two parts. It comes from de, which is from, which is Latin, and service, servus. So life, everything that you get in life, you deserve. And it comes to you as a result of serving other people. So always think of that is deserve it. Do you remember the movie um, Saving Private Ryan? Yes, absolutely. Remember that, that critical line where he's the captain is dying and he calls, he pulls uh, Private Ryan over and yeah. he says, earn this, yep. earn this, which means basically deserve this. What everyone has gone through to save you, deserve this. And that guided his whole life right up until the... Um, the scene in the, in, the, in the cemetery. Well, that's what we do is we constantly look for ways to serve other people and uh, it'll come back to you just as sure as God made little green apples. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Brian. Take care. And again, all the best. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Mike. Bye-bye.